Tis the season to be gaming, and Warhammer 40k Battle Sister is at the vanguard of Oculus's promising lineup of holiday releases. Well, the time has come to see if developers Pixel Toys have birthed our space savior or offered Battle Sister as a sacrifice upon the altar of mediocrity. Let us bow our heads and pray. From Star Wars to Lord of the Rings, from trading cards to tabletop gaming, when it comes to the nerdier pastimes, I've just about covered them all. That is, however, with the notable exception of Warhammer. While I circled around it for many years and I knew a lot of people who loved it, I just never latched on. Thankfully, Battle Sister doesn't require a PhD in Warhammerology and can introduce you into the 40k universe with a mercifully succinct introduction. Essentially, humanity is waging an intergalactic war on all fronts led by the mighty Space Pope, aka the Emperor. He seems to believe that everyone with a differing viewpoint to his own is a heretic and must be cleansed. Thankfully, he has an army of militantly radicalized space nuns at his disposal, all of whom are ready to leap into the fray and die in glorious battle for his approval. When it comes to the actual game mechanics, Warhammer 40k Battle Sister is hardly revolutionary, but it is undoubtedly well produced. I quite enjoyed my first foray into the 40k universe, but I will say that its relationship to the gameplay is fairly superficial. Warhammer 40k Battle Sister sees the player take on the role of Sister Ophelia, a battle-scarred veteran of the Order. When her friend and mentor is cut down in battle, Sister Ophelia returns to the floating space convent for some much-needed soul-searching. Needless to say, things do not go smoothly. I won't go into any more plot details, but I will say that from that point onwards, you continue to do your holy duty towards the Emperor's War with almost no question. As you continue this holy war through space, you will have little interaction with the world around you, save for the items that you are supposed to use. This is limited to weapons and one type of mechanism that you either fix or break depending on the requirements of each level. Enemy weapons disappear along with their corpses, except for in one level where you are inexplicably allowed to use the baddies cool axe things. Warhammer 40k Battle Sister offers a tour de force of the usual suspects of VR interfaces. This makes it both familiar to more experienced players and intuitive for those newer to the medium. Guns can be holstered at the hips, melee weapons and larger guns can be holstered over the shoulder, and grenades attached to the belt. There's no inventory system other than a pouch which stores the readily available ammunition. No health packs are needed as your health recharges over time. Combat in Battle Sister is good fun. It's simple but effective. You have a range of weapons from pistols to flamethrowers with which you take down the various demons and lunatics that you encounter. They're all interesting, but in reality, the starting bolter is all you really need. Gunfights can be hectic until you learn to use the cover around you, picking off ranged opponents while axe-wielding heretics charge headlong into your steady stream of gunfire. In addition to the more conventional weapons, your militant space nun can also perform gesture-based acts of faith. These powers are unlocked as you progress through the story and will, in many cases, become the difference between death and... Uh, not death? Once used, your faith meter, displayed on the rosary beads located at your wrist, will recharge and will do so even quicker the more you kill. It would seem that the Warhammer God is indeed a bloodthirsty, vengeful God. Although convenient, the rechargeable health mechanism does make the game relatively easy. If you find yourself in trouble, all you need to do is hide behind something for a while and you're good to go. In my playthrough, there were only one or two places where I died repeatedly and needed to take a breather and think strategically. Other than that, it was pretty easy to progress as everything you need is abundantly available. There was only one time when I found myself out of ammo, couldn't immediately replenish it, and had to rely on my melee weapons. Speaking of melee weapons, one of the things that I was most looking forward to in Battle Sister was testing out the melee combat. Despite a few noteworthy attempts, 
there really isn't anything on the quest that scratches the itch for a solid melee combat mixed with good quality gunplay. The brilliant Sorrento VR comes close, but the swords lack any real physical presence, a fact which robs it of some immersion. The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners offers the best melee combat on the platform, but the stamina system in that game doesn't match so well with a fast-paced non-stop action adventure. So when I saw the trailer for Battle Sister, I thought this could be the one. Sadly, it really isn't. The game provides you with a range of melee weapons, all of which can hack and dismember the screaming heretics that relentlessly come charging at you. You can block incoming swings from the axe-wielding maniacs, so if you really try, you can almost fool yourself into thinking that you're participating in some actual swordplay. In reality though, there's no real physics behind it, and if you want, you can just wiggle your sword around in front of you and watch as pieces of the enemy fly. It's regrettable, because the gunplay is the kind of accessible arcade-style affair that I quite enjoy. If there had been just a bit more depth put into the melee system, then Warhammer 40k Battle Sister would have stood head and shoulders above the pack. Graphically, Battle Sister really shows the difference between the limitations of smaller indie productions and games that have a bit more money behind them. Battle Sister sets a high bar for the visual world that you occupy, with a diverse range of scenery and settings. The game takes players through the labyrinthine corridors of the space nunnery, to the surface of a desolate planet, and deep inside the interiors of a hulking warship. Overall, everything here looks pretty good, although some environments do look better than others. It is, however, not perfect, and there are a few notable exceptions that stop Battle Sister from being uniformly lovely. Interspersed within the game are some textures so flat that they look out of place, almost like placeholders that someone forgot to come back in and finish. Bullet hole textures hover inches away from surfaces, looking quite odd as you walk past them. They look like detached, disembodied textures just floating there with no connection to the world. Fog and darkness are generally used to good effect, hiding the more distant textures and allowing for some large internal spaces. Still, there are times where this can feel a bit overused and lazy. Often I would explore the darker corners, only to be disappointed with how little effort had been put into these sections. There are also several glitches present where areas of the level will load in without their textures. Still, as with other newly released games, I'm optimistic that these issues will be patched out in short order. The soundscape that Battle Sister provides is more than adequate, fitting the thematical elements of the game well. The music intensifies in battle and drops away in between action sequences, which is fitting, but can be a little jarring when you encounter small groups of enemies. No sooner does the tense action music begin before BAM BAM and you're suddenly abruptly back to the walking soundtrack again. The spatial audio cues are decent, giving an adequate warning when there's an enemy nearby or approaching from behind. The voice acting is excellent, with the character portrayals believable and engaging. The main characters carry the story well, bringing an authenticity that surprised me amongst the heavy-handed pseudo-Catholic rhetoric. When I entered one of my first combat encounters, I found the cries of the heretic horde genuinely alarming. The crazed cockney-sounding madmen put me in mind of a terrifying post-apocalyptic walk down Ridley Road Market. Even though the few lines that they have do grow stale quickly, they are at least initially impactful. I must admit, however, that by the end of the story, I grew tired of the constant ideological references. Warhammer 40k Battle Sister has positioned itself as an accessible entry-level shooter with a bit more grit than others in the genre. While it doesn't bring anything revolutionary to the table, it does deliver a solid experience that is genuinely fun to play. At about four hours, it's hardly an opus, but the story, voice acting, mechanics, and gameplay are all good enough to make the game a valid purchase for fans of the genre or franchise. Once the promised multiplayer horde mode is introduced, this should become an even more well-rounded package and one with greater longevity. Seven. If you like Sixed Off reviews and would like to stay up to date with all of our latest videos and content, hit the subscribe button now. 
and if thine wishes to stay free from mine holy wrath, clicketh the like button now. Uh, th- now. Th-